A reading from the Revelation to John. After this, I, John, looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands, they cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders, and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne, and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing, and glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might, be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed and white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And then one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd and he will guide them to springs of the water of life and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now we will read Psalm 34 in unison. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me out of all my terror. Look upon him and be radiant, and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me, and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him, and he will deliver them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. Fear the Lord, you that are his saints. For those who fear him lack nothing. The young lions lack and suffer hunger. But those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. The Lord grants them the life of his servants. And none will be punished to trust in him. A reading from the first letter of John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him. For we will see him as he is, and all those, and all who have hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. The word of the Lord.
Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. And then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. <coughs> Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets, were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. <coughs> Praise to you, Lord Christ. Peter Kasparian. I am a retired priest. Uh, I've been ordained since 1974. I've been around the block a few times. Uh, I'm, uh, I work at St. Mark's Church with Christian and Madeline uh, and do a lot of student ministry at Texas State in my retiring years. I just do what I want to do because nobody pays me to do anything <laughs> anymore. Do, you have any, do we have any PBS public uh, TV watchers here? Uh, one of our favorite shows uh, through COVID, I guess, we started watching is Finding Your Roots. Anybody? Henry Louis Gates. Uh, does and the show uh, is is actually pretty simple. Uh, he invites on to his show usually two uh, well-known people, actors, actresses, um, important people, and the whole show is based on doing their family tree. The people that show up are not genealogists uh, that know everything about their parents and great-grandparents and where they came from. They're usually, and this is way more interesting, they know nothing. Uh, <laughs> they know their parent, their father or their mother, sometimes not even that. Uh, but through DNA and this sort of hardcore research that Henry Louis Gates uh, is able to a mass, uh, the show unfolds with them learning who they are, uh, what their heritage has been, uh, what their DNA comes from, uh, and there are usually lots of surprises uh, in their heritage. At the end of the hour-long show, uh, they unfold this huge family tree, 
Uh, there's a lot of, uh, there's usually a lot of tears in there uh, as people come to grips with the, the challenges that their ancestors faced as they worked down the generations and made the person who I am, who they are. You all might know a lot about your parents. You might have known your grandfathers and grandmothers. Did anybody know their great, a great grandparent? Wow, that's usually uh, great, great grandparents. <laughs> you, you, well, we're lucky these days. But most of us, that's about it. Where they come from, who you are. That's biological DNA. That's this world genealogy. But there's also spiritual DNA. And I want to talk about who I am because of my spiritual ancestors, the ones who helped shape me into who I am today. And I have to go back to the uh, uh, 60s when I was a, a teenager in Fulton, Kentucky, which is way at the western end of, of Kentucky, right on the border of uh, Tennessee, actually, almost to the Mississippi River. I was a teenage teenager there and one of those uh, church geek acolytes. Uh, I was, there was a group of guys there that were acolytes in this very small church. Uh, but the crucifer every Sunday was named Edmund Corey. And Edmund was the popcorn seller on Main Street in Fulton, Kentucky. He had some probably birth challenges and was a reasonably uh, simple man, uh, but had a spirit of uh, engagement, mostly to sell nickel bags of popcorn on Main Street in Fulton, Kentucky. He was always the crucifer at Trinity Church Fulton. And we arrogant teenage boys uh, usually resented Edmund always being the crucifer. He was probably, we thought of him as an old guy. He was probably 38, 39, 40 years old. But every Sunday morning, we were candle bearers behind the waft of Edmund, who always smelled of corn oil <laughs> and sweat and simplicity. And I guess we kind of resent it. You know, it's a, carrying the cross is the, the big deal, right? In the procession. Quite, uh, several years later, actually, I, I was 23 years old and was ordained deacon at that same uh, church, that same little church on a late June day in Fulton, Kentucky. You know who was the crucifer that day at McCory, <laughs> of course, and the young snotty-nosed deacon following behind right in front of the bishop of, of Kentucky. And it took me that long, I guess, to understand why the rector of Trinity Church Fulton always let Edmund Corey be the crucifer. It was his one shining moment every, every week. He got teased pretty much unmercifully selling his nickel bags of popcorn on Main Street in Fulton, Kentucky. But on Sunday morning, he led the procession. And that day of my ordination to the diaconate, he felt as proud as my mother and father because I was one of his. I was one of his. Why did it take me all those three years of seminary education to learn what it means to be humble, 
for the meek to inherit. I don't know. Glad I learned it. Glad I learned it. I was chaplain at the University of Kansas as well in the from 1979 to 86, one of the great jobs in the Episcopal Church. Uh, they weren't playing football then, they do now. Uh, we had a small student chapel uh, right beside Canterbury House and uh, the janitor of the uh, library was one of the regulars at Canterbury House for every service. Uh, Bernie liked getting hugs from uh, undergraduate girls mostly. Uh, he was Down syndrome and kind of like Edmund, I've learned my lesson by then uh, to let him have his time of peace and of welcome and power and importance as he stood outside Canterbury House Chapel every Sunday evening welcoming students. My favorite memory of Bernie was that he didn't much care for my sermon and took the opportunity to go to the bathroom as I started the sermon every Sunday evening and the back was kind of like right off the chapel so as my sermon was ending there'd be this powerful flush <laughs> and Bernie would appear again uh, for the rest of the service I learned another lesson that sometimes that gift of welcome that gift of simplicity that you know, I don't need to hear another sermon is more worthwhile. <laughs> in my next job, I was rector of a church in Lexington, Kentucky uh, for 10 years from 1986 until 95. And our uh, youth minister was a woman named uh, Mary Freer and Freer that's what, what stood about 6'3", a powerful woman. She had actually been recruited for the Secret Service, uh, but then learned that she'd have to step in front of the bullet uh, for the president if she was doing it. She decided she didn't want to do that. She was a big target. Uh, she was the youth minister and had uh, served throughout her life, just a warm, gentle giant of a person uh, welcoming every everybody and ran the youth group. She had had a bout with cancer as a young woman and in her uh, late 30s her cancer returned and for a period of probably three years going through mastectomies and chemo and all that sort of stuff still ran the youth group and shared with the kids what it's like to die. What it's like to retain your hope, retain your faith, retain your love, retain your energy. And my daughters were completely shaped in their spirituality by her ministry rather than mine. You know, clergy kids are not very, uh, uh, not known for following their parents' uh, spirituality. But I thank God all the time that our daughters inherited that from their spiritual mentor and me too. Edna, Bernie, Freer. I was also the rector of St. James Church in Florence, Italy, which is probably the best job, maybe better than being a college chaplain. We were there for 10 years, and one of the saints I knew and loved there, she's still alive, she's 80, 82, 83, uh, 
Sue Patterson is her name. She was the Consul General of, uh, in Florence, Italy. Uh, she was my senior warden. She was involved in hiring me there, which, for which I will ever be thankful. She had formerly been the uh, Consul General in Guatemala City before going to Florence, Italy as her reward. Uh, she retired back in uh, Antigua, Guatemala after she finished in Florence in the late 90s. Built a very nice house, living on her pension as a state, uh, from the State Department. Uh, one day, her, uh, her maid came to her uh, and told Sue she was pregnant again with her seventh child. Eight, she was uh, 25 years old, I guess. And just in the conversations that ensued over the uh, continuation of her maid's pregnancy, um, Sue let her know that a tubal ligation could uh, take care of having any more children. Seven would have been enough. And uh, the maid researched that. It would cost $123 uh, to get a tubal ligation after the birth of her, her child. And Sue just reached in, into her purse and uh, paid for that tubal ligation. Happy story. Well, the maid, in her thankfulness, told her friends, uh, and they told their friends, and pretty soon Sue was being asked for another $23,000 from Maria, and another from Eugenia, and another. And she, after she came to the bottom of her generosity, uh, invited generosity from her friends, and uh, people just told the story, and pretty soon she had six or seven thousand dollars in her bank account. And decided she didn't need it in her bank account. Uh, started a five hundred one c three to hold the money. Well, this small group of people, this small pocket of money, uh, turned into a. Uh, NGO called Wings. I became on the board, uh, a member of the board on Wings. I go to Antigua uh, twice a year. Started out when I joined, it was about a $30,000 a year entity. It doubled each year. Now it's a multi million dollar NGO that does reproductive health, um, teaching. Um, vasectomies, uh, cervical screenings. That's, so that willingness to be generous and to begin something has turned into something that has really built and strengthened lots and lots of Guatemalan families right now. It's all over Guatemala. Uh, they do mobile clinics, uh, all sort of, all through the AIDS, just a lot of wonderful, wonderful things. So Sue is still one of my living saints uh, with the DNA, the spiritual DNA of that generosity and extension of herself. One of the wonderful things about being on that board of wings uh, was going for the, uh, the fall meeting on All Saints Day and All Souls Day to Antigua, Guatemala. Uh, as many of you know, that celebration of Dia de los Muertos for our uh, Latin uh, brothers and sisters, especially indigenous of Mexico and Central America, uh, where they go and decorate uh, the cemeteries. And in Antigua, it is a glorious, glorious, glorious day. Uh, whole families come out with armfuls of calla lilies and uh, beautiful flowers, generations, little kids, older kids, and decorate the graves, picnic baskets, and they spread their uh, blankets on the graves, and they have lunch with their ancestors. 
as if it was real. Because it is real. When we pray with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we are celebrating the flesh and blood community and the spiritual community gathered together in the joy of our recreation, the joy of our hope, the joy of everlasting bliss, streets paved with gold, maybe, who knows? But this reassurance of continuity, that reassurance of perpetual community is what we celebrate on All Saints, All Souls, not with the varsity anymore, Peter and Paul and all those guys, but with the, the souls that shaped you and me and helped make you the people you are just as strongly and powerfully as your biology. So as Vicki and I read this necrology, imagine yourself at a dining table with those people, sharing the community, sharing the love, sharing the eternal hope that we have in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. We remember those who have gone before. Eric Alstrom, Mary Reagan Baker, and George W. Baker. Daisy Bell Thompson, Charles and Marie Berry, Pat and Roy Chandler. Gary Cliff, Seth Cowan, Tommy Cowan, Francis Everline, and Gil Gilbert Everline. Steve Frankie, Donna and Pat Gage, Virginia and Kenneth Greenman. Jesus Ian, Simona Guillen, Donna Barry Hankinson, and Reverend Edward Hanson. We remember Nathan Horner, Gary Clava, Leah May, Latin Barham, Mark Bryant, Alice Myquist, Henry K. Manning, <clears throat> Mary Jo Manning, Lula Marie Jenkins. We remember Bill Meek and Beverly Meek, Malcolm, Catalina, and Tom Nither. John Patricia, Bill Riedelhuber, Edward Ward Robertson, and Federico Serrano. Shavika Michelle Birdsong, Birdsong, Birdsong. Waynard and Betty Simmons, Jane and Bob Spitter. Bill Clyde Terry, Dick Vale, Bob Vale, and Bessie Vale. <coughs> we remember Louis Velasquez, Wayne Westfall, Larry and Mark Jenkins. And I'm sure you are all remembering people that have helped shape you and form you and guide you and nurture you and cajole you and kick you when it meant making you into a better person or who God hoped you will be or are today. the Lord continue to shelter them, to guide them into everlasting bliss and love and life. All this we ask in the great and glorious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's now stand and affirm that faith of the centuries as we share the Nicene Creed.
We believe in one God, God the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, 